Alright, what's up everybody? You kicking it with the Junkyard Dog on JunkyardDogs.com uh, So we're going to be doing something a little different this time um, Yeah, this is my first blog post And the reason why I'm starting to do this is because There's a lot of stuff happening in between uh, the episodes, the informational episodes That I'm going to start letting you guys in on Because, um, I, I mean, it's, it's rough out here, man I'm trying to put it together for you guys um, But yeah, it's been an interesting week uh, we've had some pretty cool things happening. Uh, we got some sponsors that are looking to get on board. Um, we also have uh, a new president, and um, you know, just a lot of little different things going on, man. So there's a lot of questions I'm getting for some strange reason. I don't know why they're asking me, but they're, they're getting. I'm getting a lot of questions about how I feel about Trump and how I feel about the inauguration, and the new president, and all this other stuff. You want to know how I feel about Trump? Race car. You want to know how I feel about the Obamas leaving office? Race car! You want to know how I feel about the inauguration? Race car! I don't care. I don't want to hear about any of that, man. Let me tell you something about this automotive game that I really, really like. Um, I have met guys. Uh, being a black man, I've gone to uh, Kentucky. And uh, it was actually pretty scary because when I rolled up on, on the, the guy's property, um, he had a Confederate flag out and everything, and I, I just thought, oh man, this is going to be all bad once he finds out I'm black. We were a little apprehensive at first when we got to talking, but man, after we got to kicking all that camshaft and, you know, crankshaft and stroker and all that kind of stuff, all of that racial stuff went out the window, man. So that's, that's, what I, that's my way of bringing some peace to all this, you know what I'm saying? Like, race car. If you like cars, I like cars. You want to ask me something about Trump? Ask me what kind of car he think he would drive. I, I don't know, you know, what kind of muscle car he would be into, or, or uh, you know, something like that. I, otherwise than that, I don't care. What, what kind of what kind of cam do you think Trump would run? You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the only questions you're gonna get out of me with concerning that. So race car. Um, yeah. So back to Project Mayhem. We've been having uh, a few issues with one part, and that's why we haven't got to the engine building portion of this build yet um, even though I took it to the machine shop um, as you can see we already have the uh, motor uh, it's already been machined everything's been checked it's a good to go block everything checked out um, we just had it home line home uh, decked you know all the good stuff so it looked good <clears throat> then um, we had an issue with uh, the cam so we went out to San Diego uh, and we got a cam and it turns out that after really close inspection, because I do a real close inspection of the cam, um, it turned out that there was like a few uh, flat spots. Now I wasn't too too concerned with some of the spots uh, that were gouged on the edges and whatnot, because you know the roller sits in the middle of the cam, but there was flat spots on the on the top or the peak of where the cam, of the cam lobe. So uh, it turned out to be trash. And that's the thing about this game, man. When, you, when you're when you doing real genuine hot riding, man, um, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And I should have taken the time, the extra time to take a look, uh, to really inspect what I was what I was buying. But it's cool. You know, there's some car guy out there who's got some extra money. Fine. Whatever. You know, it's water under the bridge. We ended up picking up another cam, uh, another F303 cam uh, from a buddy of mine. And this one has never been installed. It still has the oil. See? Still has some of the oil from the manufacturer on it. And I sprayed it down with WD-40, but this thing's never been installed. It's nice and smooth, it's perfect. And I got this um, for $60 less than I would have if I bought it brand new. And this one's never been installed. So that's what we're gonna use. F303 cam, perfect, okay? So, F303 cam, why do we choose that? Works great with boost, nice lift. Nice choppy idle, makes the car sound really mean. All right. Now, the next thing that we brought to the machine shop was a crank. Let me unravel this sucker right quick. The reason why I got it wrapped up in a towel is because you want to make sure that this thing absolutely does not get nicked whatsoever. Uh, reason being is because uh, it just needs to be super butter smooth. And um, I really am going to go ahead and clean this off with a lint-free uh, cloth after the fact. But um, the machine shop did an excellent job. Uh, it was not Valios that did this. The, uh, this was um, Arius. 
And they deal with cylinder heads and crankshafts only, specifically. So, um, the great thing about them is the guy who works at that machine shop, he also works at SCAT uh, in the finishing department at SCAT. So, uh, he did an amazing job polishing it. He did an amazing job, okay? So, um, yeah, they also, uh, uh, they tanked it. They, 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 you know, they chamfered all the holes. They did a really, really good job. So I'm really pleased. They turned this uh, 1010, um, which is uh, pretty interesting, uh, considering that I thought they would be okay, but he just wanted to be sure. And uh, they turned it 1010, meaning uh, they took 10 thousandths of an inch uh, in uh, diameter away from each one of the, the journals, okay? You got main journals, and then we have rod journals, okay? And I'll explain that further on in the uh, in the series, okay? Now, um, one of the other things that we had, we're having some pretty serious issues with, is the pistons, okay? Now, I am very, very particular about this part of the build. You have to be. When you're using used parts, you have to really inspect them. You have to really, really inspect them. And I don't mean just looking at them saying, oh yeah, they look okay. No, all right? So check this out. Uh, it is, this one is actually very, very good. It's a very good piston. And the reason why, if you look closely, and you look on the edges here, there's no abrasion in the edges of this piston, okay? That's the first thing. Second thing is the top is very smooth. All we did was take uh, a little bit of um, WD-40 spray on top of here and then we just kind of lightly use a scotch Brite pad and just cleaned it. The reason why you don't want to use anything uh, more rougher than that is because then you'll gouge it. And, and the pistons have um, machining marks in them. And the minute that you start seeing those machining marks disappearing means that you, whatever you're using to clean them is too rough. Okay, you got to be very, very careful with that. You change the compression ratio and like I said, I'll explain all that in the later video. Also, you want to make sure that on the side of the piston, that the uh, piston rings, the, the, the area between the piston rings, grooves, which are these grooves here, um, isn't mushroomed out. A lot of times when somebody is running a motor and maybe run it low on oil, and or the motor is pushed further than it's supposed to, what will happen, it will mushroom out the side of the piston. Um, you want to pay attention to that too, and you'll know where, where you'll be able to actually catch your finger on uh, the edge of it and see if it's been mushroomed up. This piston is excellent. We're going to look at this bad piston, okay? So we're going to look around the edge here, okay? And you're going to see there's a nick right there, and there's another nick right there. Very small, right? And you're like, oh, that's not going to do anything. Well, you got to think, and I'm, as a machinist, I know that small things, even if something's off by five thousandths, make a huge difference. And the reason why this nick is a big problem is because you got to think of the motor rotating at 5,000 RPM. 5,000 times, you know, per minute. I mean, it's, it's going, okay? So you try to imagine that this little bump here rubbing against the cylinder wall, it's going to score the cylinder wall, okay? Especially when we're, we're going to be boosting it. You don't want anything like this going into your motor, okay? Now, some people say, oh, you can just sand it off, or you can just, but that's not only the problem with this piston. If you look on the side here, on the side where it's thrusted, it's got a mushroom, just like what I was talking about earlier. The piston ring at the top most likely looked like the, the, the engine was starved for oil at some point, and it pushed up on the ring, on, on the piston, and the ring was fighting against it, and it uh, and it mushroomed the, the piston a little bit. So this piston is no good. So we're gonna go uh, junkyard hunting. We're gonna go ahead and find another uh, E7 block from '87 to '92 uh, Mustang, and uh, yeah, go ahead and hunt down some good pistons. You know, this is a part of the fun. I remember back in the uh, back in the day, my dad said that uh, they used to hop into the bins um, at the uh, Ford factory and uh, and act with a micrometer and they would actually measure different pistons and sizes to see you know which ones were the best and that's how they blueprint their motor back in the day. It's kind of funny. That's old school hot riding because they didn't have aftermarket. They had to do it like that. So um, here we are doing the same thing but I know you could just go to Summit or whatever, but that's not the point of this. The point of this is you guys are going to learn how to build a motor from junkyard parts properly, all right? You've got to inspect your parts. 
Now, the second part of this equation that we've been having issues with is the rods. Now, this is not as big of a problem, okay? As long as the rod is straight, you can have them resize. But there's a portion of this rod that I want people to see that uh, can cause an issue when you're uh, rebuilding it, okay? Now, rods have a, a, a groove in them right here for the bearing to sit, okay? So the bearing sits in here and it nests into this little groove and it stops it from spinning, all right? Now, if you look closely at this rod here, um, there is a little bit, it looks like the metal was pushed, so definitely, definitely this motor was starved for oil at some point, okay? Because it looks like the bearing was dry and was trying to spin in the bore, okay? And you, the way you can tell is when you look at it, there's a little area that is uh, pushed up. And you don't want that, okay? Because what's going to happen is the tab's going to slip past that area and it's going to it's gonna spin, all right? So, um, yeah, we definitely don't want that, man. So, um, to, get, to fix that problem, uh, you have to get the rods resized. And what that means is uh, they put it uh, in a, on a uh, machine and they machine it uh, flat again, which kind of makes it oval. And then they use a, uh, a line boring of some sort. I don't, I've never seen it done, but I'm sure that's what they do. And they rebore it round, okay? Now, um, that will eliminate that little area that uh, that we don't agree with as far as the, the tabs, okay? So, um, yeah, so we gotta get the rods resized, we gotta hunt down some more pistons. So that's what's going on with Project Mayhem. Um, that's why we're taking a little longer to get the motor together. Um, it's difficult when you're doing it the old school way, but that's why there was more pride in our motors back in the day, you know? So, um, I'm doing it old school, I'm doing it the way my, my dad and my uncles um, did it. I'm an old junkyard dog, that's how I got into this. If you guys ever go to the website, www.junkyarddogs.com, you'll see my story in the about section about how I got into this. My dad used to bring me to the junkyard with him. Um, now, you know, you can't bring kids to the yard anymore, you know, but at the time, uh, he, you know, the yard we used to go to was, was family owned. It wasn't, everybody wasn't all worried about getting sued and all that other nonsense, you know. It was like now, it was like, Oh, you know, you got a kid in the yard, make sure that he doesn't do anything stupid. And uh, yeah, so my dad used to give me like wrenches and, and hammers or whatever and just send me out into the yard, you know, like, all right, don't get, don't hurt yourself and don't get in, underneath any cars. I was like, all right, cool. And I'd go and learn how to take stuff off. So that's that's pretty much how I, uh, I got into this. So uh, yeah, guys, junkyard dogging, man. So next week we're going to, hopefully, um, I'm going to order some bearings for the crank and at least get the cam and the crank in the block. Um, we also got to clean the block, all right? So I'm not going to assemble it coming from the machine shop dirty like that, you know? When I say dirty, it could be metal shavings in there. Most likely is metal shavings and also uh, FM, also known as foreign materials, uh, all inside the motor. We don't want that. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and uh, visit the website, man. We're going to be starting up a forum on there soon, too, so you guys can ask any questions you have. And I'll be sure to try to answer them as soon as possible. All right? Junkyard dog it! Ah!